So, um, hi everyone, I'm Patrick and I just moved here about a month ago, well, late last month. And uh, yeah, so I'm actually looking for it right now, so um, here I am. Uh, so, Serama, this wasn't actually my first choice, I was actually looking at Apex, which was a AWS Lambda runtime, although that was actually installed by piping a curl request to shell, and that seems like kind of a non-starter for, you know, actually to test out certain libraries, so. Uh, Serama is a wrap, wrapper for the interface for uh, Apache Kafka. It comes with a consumer and producer API. Yes, next slide. And so um, Kafka was introduced at, uh, well, made at LinkedIn, and I actually don't represent Shopify, which um, made Serama. I don't represent LinkedIn, and so it's no sweat off my back if you guys decide to stick with Serama Q or any other messaging queue solution. So um, anyway, what is Apache Kafka? Um, it's a replicated centralized stream data source uh, in Scala that comes with a few job drivers. And conceptually, you have message producers, which publish messages that can either be um, their binary content or strings that you might uh, encode, decode, or parse the other way on either end. And uh, those messages are published to a Kafka server, which contains anywhere from one to n topics that you might want to messages in, and <coughs> sorry. Um, lastly, there's um, consumers who take messages off those topics and do something interesting with them. So, um, topics. so with Serrano, you have consumer and producer drivers for Apache Kafka depending on whether or not you want Go to be handling your message source or message destination. So, <coughs> There's the high-level API, which uh, is what you normally be using to handle strings. And there's also the low-level API, where you you doing that for binary data. So um, the default cap on message size is around one meg, and so understandably, you take a performance hit to larger your messages. Uh, additionally, um, with the way that half the, sorry, with the way that half the messages work, um, you can't expect mess. Answer. So um, the way that messages work, if you send messages one, two, three, four, and five in a specific order, there's no guarantee that you'll recover those messages from a topic in that exact same order, which is why we'll care about the timestamps in a second. I'm going to show the uh, structs that represents the message. Cool, so if that's already piqued your interest, how do you get started? So on the Kafka site, you can actually download a gzip file that contains a bunch of shell scripts and fix. And so there's one shell script that actually starts up a local Zookeeper instance. There's another shell script that starts the server with when you give right and fix. You can also, from there, there's a script to create a topic and then also run a Kafka message consumer and, sorry, producer and consumer in console. So in your terminal, you can actually do this with a couple of Windows or with Tmux. You can sort of type in your messages into the producer and actually see them come out on the other end with the consumer. So, um, so that's if you're just completely tested from scratch. If you're working at a place that may already be using Kafka, uh, you may just end up making a GoLang based consumer using Serama and simply just set that up as a consumer and do something interesting with messages that come out for that particular topic. So um, this is code from the official Serama Go doc. Uh, this is for the async producer. There's also code for the consumer on the other end. But uh, I just wanted to show this for completeness sake, although I did take out the import statements for gravity. A model should look kind of familiar, uh, so if you work with um, any sort of uh, ORM or DB drivers, or just, you know, you sort of for the closing steps so that the process doesn't stay open. And also, uh, here we sort of come up with this producer message here with a particular flux. Uh, the keys are not necessary, but the value is the actual message content that we're sending to the topic and eventually the message consumer. Um, I was also note that there's um, probably the most common loop structure where uh, you sort of put the name of the loop and then also break to that specific name once you once you do it. So um, that was the sample clip for the producer. Um, there's more in the official repo. It's really complete, but one potential object I can mention is that um, I believe it's the it's log4j where the zookeeper and Kafka server output is being sort of dumped to. And so 
By default, Ceramics documentation have assumes that it's local host 9092. Uh, it's not, and so I used a bunch of four-letter words as I was trying to debug that. But uh, yeah, um, you will have to kind of check the broker, the Kafka broker log to figure out what it really is. So what's the struct of making messages? So I, I mean, port up this is here. Since I said earlier that you're not guaranteed to receive messages in the same order that they're put into a uh, into a topic, uh, you do have these offset and timestamps to take a look at, and also you can recover the topic that is retrieved from, and also the message content itself and the value. And so, the main reason I was looking at this was because I I was coming from the Node.js ecosystem. Um, doing about two-thirds back-end work, third front-end work. And um, I was thinking of making something like a dashboard using Kafka and actually piping the data through a you know, like service over the front-end and doing something meaningful with it with WebSockets. So here's a short example with uh, slash x slash net slash WebSockets, although I imagine the code for using Google WebSockets would look terribly different. So this is where, so kind of like the way we had um, async uh, message producer set up at the top, we would have an analogous uh, consumer instead, and then down here we would actually have the code that does the consumption of the messages. So here, what was interesting to me was the fact that it was using channels. So it comes with both a synchronous API, which is blocking, and then an asynchronous API, which is using the channels. So here I'm just taking it off uh, partition consumer's message property, Cast as a string and then sending it over WebSockets and she probably write it in letters there, but <clears throat> I would also note that um, I also have this Kafka loop set up here because if that wasn't present, I would just be publishing that first message and nothing else. And you know, I just want more data than that. And so uh, here's kind of a messy architectural example I drew. Um, so, so there's a few uh, Kafka message producers up in the top corner. Those could, it's pretty abstract, and those could be you know, IoT devices, could be other Golang services, and so on. But those will publish messages over to this Kafka cluster and whatever topology. I felt like topology sort of gets away from the Go aspect problem. And then those topics get pushed, or those consumer on the Golang server pulls in those messages from whichever topics, one through n. So surround would be somewhere around here, and then that could talk to some community SQL or NoSQL store and also send the data blinds. So how do you use this with other libraries here? Um, you could treat those Kafka messages as observations, such as like a real-time scenario that you're trying to uh, abstract, and then render them using GoTerm, or you could store these in a SQL database using GORM or another time series to eat on my fix problem a bit more. And then initially you could try to use Cobra to sort of just render that output directly to terminal. And to mention, um, so there's a little scenario that I mentioned with dashboards involved potentially sending messages that might represent, say, if I were doing a mapping project and I had leaflet.js on the front end, I could be sending messages that have latitude, longitude, and maybe the marker type. So then once that message is received on the front end, I can just do JSON parse, look at the tag on that particular JSON structure, and decide, all right, well, this marker is supposed to be a, a pin drop or a circle with a certain radius, and so on. So that's one uh, application I was trying to look at for this. And so as far as additional reading goes, there's the official Apache Kafka documentation. There's the SRAM link on GitHub. I've also included a link to a, another channel-based zero and key driver in case this doesn't exactly what it needs. And then also there's a pretty interesting discussion on the Golang subreddit where uh, there's kind of discussion between someone else who wrote a strictly blocking API for Kafka and one of the uh, core contributors for Sarama. So, uh, thanks.